Hi guys, Whitney here. Today on The Sitch, we're answering a very important question. Is coconut oil going to kill you? Newsflash people, it's not the coconut oil. It's also not the gluten or the soy or any other single ingredient that the fear-mongering media repeatedly warn you about on a daily basis. The relentless ranting occurring online since the release of the American Heart Association's recent review of saturated fat and heart disease and their demonization of coconut oil is getting out of control. Food is powerful, but single ingredients are not that powerful. Food works synergistically, and disease prevention is the result of the totality of your daily intake combined with your other health habits. Sleep, hydration, stress management, movement, and the avoidance of harmful behaviors like smoking and excessive drinking. Not one thing, not one ingredient, not coconut oil. With that said, studies have not yet proven that coconut oil is the panacea for chronic disease that people make it out to be. But with experts on both sides of the coconut oil debate doing their best to convince you that its consumption will either cure you or kill you, it's hard to know who to believe. That's where today's video comes in. Today we're going to dissect the evidence on this greasy debate. First up, the American Heart Association study. The AHA recently released a review of the evidence on the connection between saturated fat, the main fat in coconut oil, and cardiovascular disease, reiterating what they've said for years. Excessive consumption of saturated fat is bad and it should be dramatically reduced from the diet. They performed a meta-analysis and showed that replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat, found in plants, nuts, and seeds, results in a 29% reduction in heart disease. That's huge. Now I'm not going to get into the argument over that fact. If you're interested in the saturated fat debate, head over to my blog for more information on that topic. Today, we're just discussing coconut oil. Now because coconut oil contains mostly saturated fat, the AHA reason that just like other saturated fat containing foods like beef, chicken, butter, milk, and eggs, coconut oil must also be linked to heart disease. But that's not exactly a fair conclusion to just jump to. The problem is there are no studies in humans that directly test coconut oil and heart disease outcomes. Here's what we do know. A handful of small short studies have shown that coconut oil raises LDL cholesterol levels, aka your bad cholesterol, compared to monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. However, these same studies also show that coconut raises HDL cholesterol levels, your good cholesterol, and to a greater extent than unsaturated fat. Additionally, these studies showed that coconut oil does not increase LDL as much as butter or other animal fats. Studies in Pacific Island populations that consume large amounts of coconut products have shown lower levels of heart disease. However, these populations typically ate coconut in whole foods forms, like coconut meat and cream, as opposed to as an oil. And they consume them as a part of their traditional diet, which is made up of health-promoting foods like seafood, which has omega-3 fatty acids, fruit, and root vegetables. Their diets were also low in processed foods, very different from a typical American diet. Coconut oil is different from other saturated fats though in that it has a high composition of phenolic acids. Phenolic acids are phytochemicals in plants that possess antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. For this reason, some have suggested that coconut oil may be beneficial for people with cognitive disorders like Alzheimer's disease. Additionally, there is mixed research showing that virgin coconut oil may help with weight loss by increasing satiety, that's fullness, and energy expenditure due to the fact that its saturated fat content comes mainly from medium chain fatty acid. Medium chain fatty acids have been shown to be less likely to be deposited as body fat than long chain fatty acids because they're metabolized differently in the body. Instead of being incorporated into what are called chylomicrons after digestion and entering the lymphatic system to be distributed to the body's tissues, like long chain fatty acids, medium chain fatty acids are absorbed directly into the bloodstream and go straight to the liver to be used as energy. However, the major medium chain fatty acid in coconut oil is lauric acid. Lauric acid actually isn't fully absorbed and metabolized the same way as other medium chain fatty acids 
and it tends to behave more like a long chain fatty acid in the body, with only about 30% going straight to the liver after absorption. This may reduce some of the potential benefits of coconut oil compared to other medium chain fats. In summary, the evidence supporting coconut oil for weight loss is slim. But let's get back to our original question. Is coconut oil going to kill you? Of course not. But let's get back to our original question. Is coconut oil going to kill you? Of course not. While the bulk of the research does show a link between saturated fat and heart disease, we don't know what is driving that association. Is it actually the saturated fat or is it other components of foods that are high in saturated fat? If it's other factors, you can't simply lump coconut oil, a plant-derived product high in medium chain fatty acids, with foods like meat, milk, eggs, and cheese, which are animal-derived foods that are high in long chain fatty acids. They're fundamentally different. What we do know is that heart disease is multifactorial, and perhaps dietary patterns that emphasize only one type of fat are what's the problem. As I said before, food works synergistically. All nutrients have a place in the diet, including saturated fat. While the research on coconut oil is sparse, it appears that consuming it as a part of a balanced, whole foods diet is appropriate. But letting it crowd out other sources of healthy fat like monounsaturated and polyunsaturated omega-3 fatty acids is probably not a good idea. The best advice is to consume it in moderation, as with all foods. It's all about balance. I wouldn't encourage eating coconut oil or any other oil by the spoonful, but I wouldn't cut it out. Here in Wits Kitchen, we use a variety of oils and fats. Avocado, olive, algae, and yes, coconut oil. And that's the sitch. If you're interested in learning more about the saturated fat debate and the research on coconut oil, head over to my blog. There's a lot more info over there and links to the studies that I mentioned. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more evidence-based nutrition information, fun functional workouts, and healthy recipes. I'm Whitney. Thanks for watching.